even Darwin would say that anything that helped a species to evolve and to continue to exist is evolution. And although Darwin, oftentimes what we think of Darwin is that, that um, in terms of competition, I think Darwin uh, also know, knew very well that cooperation was just as important as competition. And when you actually look at nature and what's happening, again, because we are the cooperation of millions, if not billions, of single organisms in our body, that's cooperation that's happening on a level that you don't even see. And we as humans really like to focus on these things that are off or different. So we, when we think of like, um, you know, rams butting head to find the best mate, you don't think of that's like very rare that that's happening on a daily basis for those animals and more of what's happening amongst those animals and amongst the viruses and bacteria in them is cooperation. 99% of what's happening is cooperation. We only look at that really small percentage of competition in terms of daily existence you know you, you even like you see someone a bar fight 99.9% .9 of the time those people aren't fighting it's not competition mm. but mm -hmm. for some reason that's what we really like to focus on mm. and and of course there there's competition and collaboration and cooperation they all play a part in existence of animals but an ecosystem is not made up of individual is not just individual objects. They're in, they are objects that have relationships with each other. And those relationships, ecosystem or social system, they don't happen without working. Like things don't work without them working. And the competition aspect is, is uh, just the minutest part of it. I don't know. So when I first started serving tea, I was, I had just turned 22. Wow. And uh, I was about Oh, seven months out of college, and um, yeah. So I was working when I first started serving tea. I was working full time as a video editor for like a movie. Yeah, I was working on a feature length documentary, and uh, and I, the, the first three months I was in Los Angeles, I was working like sixty hour weeks. I was working all, and it, it was essentially it was an internship. I got paid pretty much next to nothing, and uh, so I, I didn't really have money. And I was living in my pickup truck and working full time. And then we finished the rough cut of the documentary, and all of a sudden I was only working 30 or 40 hours a week, which was fr heaven, free time. Like this is great. Uh, and and that's when I really realized I am lacking community. I'm lacking genuine human interactions. My only friend in Los Angeles was my friend who I was working for. He was the director of the movie I was working on, and he's a good buddy. But you know, you sit in a room with them, that person, 60 hours a week. <laughs> the last thing you want to do is sit with them for um, you know your spare time mm. you know for uh, about two years after first I first started serving tea I just kind of did it as I like bounced around a little bit and traveled to a few places and I would just open my tailgate um, it wasn't something that wasn't like the main function of my existence it was it was really just to meet people I never had a sign that said free tea it was just open the tailgate cook some food make some tea and you know let things unfold and it wasn't until um, about two years in that uh, I was in Seattle with a friend of mine um, and she came out I was on Broadway on Capitol Hill and and we were I invited her to come experience serving tea with me and we made tea for a whole evening and we had every kind of person we had just such a great mesh and variety of people we had a bunch of like Christian missionaries we had some street kids we had you know um, and just great conversation great connection Really cool. And at the end of the evening, she said, Giuseppe, you have to do this more. And I said, you know, and I had, I had actually tried and kind of failed starting a nonprofit film production company. And, you know, because I always just had a drive to do something. And I, and I that winter I was house sitting and, and I, I just, I had tried so hard to do something with this nonprofit film production company, but what I realized was that the simplest thing that I had already been doing in my life for a couple years had the most impact that I, of anything I'd ever tried to do, to make an impact. Impact on others or impact on yourself? I think both. So I think that serving a tea both impacts me and others. Um, you know, for other people, it's really cool. What people, different people get different things from the tea bus. Some people are inspired by the fact that someone is 
has dedicated their life to giving or dedicated their life to living their passion or isn't um, hasn't you know fallen under the kind of um, that uh, expectation that um, to make money or have a career of something that's like kind of more traditional or find success in, in climbing the ladder or, or whatever and some people it's just a listening ear some people just don't have um, I mean, like a lot of homeless people don't have someone to listen to whatever they have to say or I've had people tell me they're this becomes a confessional it's just me and a person and they're telling me about their heartbreak or their or they're trying to figure out you know what their life plans are and we you know talk and and I think that a lot of people don't experience that a lot especially with strangers and I think a lot of people actually like that about me that I'm a stranger that I show up I'm in town for a short period of time they share their deep dark secrets with me and then I leave <laughs> and then I don't they don't have to worry about me telling anyone and um, so everyone gets something different out of the T-Bus. And some people, it's technical. They're like, wait, how does the solar electric system, how does the vegetable oil system work? Wait, like, and um, and then for me personally, um, in being of service, um, I get to focus on being of service to people rather than being of service to money. So the T-Bus is, some people think it's about tea and yeah, it's, a, it's kind of about tea, um, but m more so the tea bus is about genuine human interactions. It's about um, being a responsible member of your community, about contributing and sharing something back, and understanding that um, there are, when you put yourself out there to share and give, you also put yourself out there to receive. So I receive so much back, not directly and highly calculated, like so many of our interactions are in society, but like. Uh, a woman today brought me a bag of peanuts, a uh, um, uh, cantaloupe, and a coconut. Uh, oh, and she also brought me some these like candied peanuts and a mocha, which I don't even really drink coffee that much, but I did today. Uh, so, um, I I receive in a very indirect ways from this. Um, I receive. I feel good, I feel happy. When I haven't served tea for a couple weeks, I start to feel down, I'm like, why do I feel down? Oh yeah, I haven't served tea. And then I go out there, and like being of service is just as much a boost to me as it is to other people. Like when people walk away from an interaction here on the tea bus, they're smiling. They're telling their friends. They're, um, you know, I get emails from people or people I meet again who say, after I met you, I decided that I, I could do this thing that I've always wanted to, or that I could, um, um, or I, I've been wanting to make this zine, and you're like, just being here helped me realize it's possible. And and I've I st or I started I learned how to do this. I learned this skill because I knew that it would be beneficial for me and my community. And it's like incredible to me that just the simple <coughs> act of making tea for free for people can inspire people to follow their passions. Uh, you know, be generous and sharing, uh, feel like a human again, you know, and all those things give back to me enormously. And then, you know, of course, you know, people share with me, people give to me, um, people give me food, people give me places to park, people give me showers and community and, uh, everything. I'm never at a lack. Like, I, I can pull, I pull into town a lot, I don't know a single person. And I'm taken care of the whole time, and not because I'm not because I just believe the universe will provide, but I believe the universe will provide if I provide for the universe. And I think that that's like the most, the heaviest, the heaviest, I guess, um, idea that I've really come across is that it's about it's a two-way street, you know. It's almost an instant karma kind of deal. Yeah, totally. And some, you know, some sometimes instant. Sometimes it's. I met I met I met people. Five years I served to someone. Five years later, I run into them somewhere, and they share with me a story. Oh my gosh! You introduced like I gave a guy a book once about this woman named Peace Pilgrim. She's mm -hmm. awesome woman, super inspiring. I gave this guy a book. Five years later, I end up. Uh, in near his home, near his town where he's living, he invites me to come. I needed to do some work on my bus. He invited me to come and do some work on my bus there. And 
and it's just it's not a um, again it's just like this really loose I want to help you and you want to help me kind of thing and sometimes it's a grand thing that I help someone with or a little thing I help someone with or a grand thing someone helps me with and or a little thing and um, yeah. when you create the room in your life to not be solely focused around one-for-one -one interactions that are highly calculated that are based on maximizing profit you open yourself up to genuine human interactions where people want to see each other succeed and the things you can't provide for yourself other people will provide for you and the things that they can't provide you will provide for them and it becomes less of a struggle and more of just a really easy way to go like I walked in I walked into the bar last night and the bartender would not let me pay for a beer The district attorney bought my dinner last night, which is so great. District attorney for four counties, and those things just happen. And like I'll laugh at them when they happen, but I never gave the district attorney anything. But he bought my dinner. <laughs>